This is, good day, everyone. This is Chris with the Ancient Scholar. Today, we're going to continue along the lines of the uh, talking about the cellular environment. And what I want to talk about is I want to talk about ad, uh, certain adaptations that occur. And we're actually going to start getting into pathophysiology proper now, at least for this video. And that that is to, to say we're going to talk about some of the, the basic and, and common terminology that you'll see used in medical records. Medical professionals will use these terms. These terms are often um, can be confusing and sometimes may even be used um, out of context or inappropriately. Uh, so this this uh, lecture I think will be very helpful in making sense of all this terminology we hear, and it'll be very important when you talk about cl the clinical environment next uh, semester. You'll start uh, clinicals and you'll have um, uh, four or five semesters of uh, clinical uh, rotations, and uh, it, this will be very helpful in understanding what we're talking about. And uh, this is a more terminology, but it does describe, this is the terminology that we use to describe cellular adaptation. And that is to say when we take cells and we put them into certain situations, uh, an illness, an injury, uh, even uh, some sort of uh, chronic uh, situation or condition that may, may or may not be uh, the result or lead to illness or injury. Um, the cells may change and can sometimes adapt to that environment. And this, of course, is a good thing that cells can adapt, and, but it can also be a bad thing as well. So let's go ahead and just talk about the terminology. And the uh, really there are five terms that you'll hear uh, thrown out there. And these terms are known as metaplasia, dysplasia, hyperplasia, hypertrophy and atrophy. And again, these are all um, uh, cellular changes or even adaptations that can occur in response to injury, illness, or some sort of situation that the, the cell or cells are placed in. So let's just go ahead and start at hypertrophy to begin with. We often hear the term um, hypertrophy, or you might read in the, the, the medical records, and it says that this patient has left ventricular hypertrophy which means um, hypertrophy of the muscle tissue in the left ventricle. Well, what does that mean? What is hypertrophy? Well, um, hypertrophy is an increase in the size of the cell. Not more cells, but the, the size of the cell itself actually increases. The individual cells will become larger. And uh, they can do this in response to lots of different things. Um, generally what will happen is the size of the tissue that these cells make up will increase and ultimately the size of the organ um, that these tissues uh, make up, these tissues make up the organ, that organ's size will ultimately become larger. This can be uh, good or bad. Uh, one of the prime examples of hypertrophy is somebody who has um, what we call hypertension or high blood pressure. And it's chronic high blood pressure their blood pressure is always elevated, and their left ventricle has to uh, pump has uh, has to pump very hard to get blood out to the body. And um, the pressure that the left ventricle has to pump against, because the left ventricle of the heart, of course, pumps blood out to circulate the rest of the body, that pressure that the heart has to overcome to get blood to push blood out is known as afterload. And um, if the afterload is very high and it can be in patients with hypertension or high blood pressure, then the heart has to work very hard. And what we can see here, we can see the cells of the left ventricle become larger. Those muscle cells, they don't actually grow. They don't, there aren't more numbers. It's just that the cells grow larger. Um, and this can be a good thing in that um, the mass of the muscle and the size of the muscle is larger, but this can be a bad thing too because as the cells increase in size, the volume that's inside of the left ventricle becomes smaller and smaller, and potentially the left ventricle, um, because these cells are so large and take up so much space, there's not a whole lot of space in, in the left ventricle itself, and very little can get ejected out of that left ventricle. So that can actually lead to problems. That's a good example of hypertrophy. Atrophy is a decrease in the size of cells, and this can be uh, due to uh, lots of things, a loss of cell components. Um, just like hypertrophy, the actual number of cells in atrophy remains the same, but the cells themselves shrink down. 
Uh, we see this in certain types of dementia. Uh, for example, Alzheimer's disease, a, a disease of the brain that causes dementia. Uh, short, long-term memory loss, uh, changes in personality, and uh, hallucinations and, and things of that nature. We actually see the cells of the brain generally, uh, particularly you know, in the frontal lobe area where we have lots of our higher functions occurring, thought, art, logic, uh, speech, uh, things of that nature in, 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 the, in the frontal area um, of the brain actually shrink. They atrophy, they shrink down. Sometimes these changes um, can be temporary, sometimes they're permanent, as, as the case may be with uh, Alzheimer's disease or, or um, atrophy. We can also see this occur in patients that have been in uh, serious accidents, and maybe they are lying in bed immobile, or maybe they have some kind of, they have maybe a spinal cord injury, and they're no longer able to communicate to their limbs. Their limbs just lay there, and the muscles aren't working. They, they atrophy, they shrink down, and the muscles essentially waste away. Um, so those are some good examples of atrophy. Okay, hyperplasia. Hyperplasia is an increase in the actual number of cells in an organ or tissue. Um, generally, this will result in the increase of the size of the tissue organ. So uh, hyperplasia is an increase in the number of cells, not, um, not the size of the cells, but the actual number of cells um, in, increases. For example, um, let's say I have uh, maybe a callus. Um, I do a lot of writing and I have a, a callus on one of my fingers because a lot of writing and it's a large bump. The actual number of cells is increased in that area in response to me writing a lot, in response to this chronic condition. Uh, we can also see hyperplasia occur in patients that have cancer where they have lots of abnormal cells that are dividing and increasing in number. Um, this is also an example of hyperplasia, where I have um, an increase in the number of cells being produced, hyperplasia. This can be good, or this can be bad in some cases. Okay, um, another term that we need to be familiar with is the term of dysplasia. Dysplasia is an alteration in the size or shape or function of a cell. Basically, when I think of dysplasia, I think of a cell that has lost the ability to function. It's lost its specialized function. So let's say I have a cell in my lung, and it secretes surfactant. And all of a sudden, it you know through uh, some sort of damage or change, those cells no longer secrete surfactant. They've lost their ability to do that. Um, that is a good example of dysplasia. Uh, when we talk about uh, certain uh, like cancerous, precancerous spots on the skin, um, that can be an example of, of dysplasia as well. People that have um, uh, had or have uh, HPV, human papillomavirus, very hot topic in pathophysiology these days with the new uh, Jardicil uh, vaccination, um, people that have um, had HPV can actually have hyperplasia, or um, excuse me, dysplasia. The cells of, uh, say, the cervix can lose their specialized ability. This is very concerning. When I have cells that lose their specialized function, um, that is often one of the, the, the steps toward cancer because cancerous cells are cells that um, not only are they dysplasic, that they've lost their specialized function, but they generally are high, uh, undergoing hyperplasia. So in, the ter in, in, in cancer, I have not only dysplasia occurring, but I have dysplasia and hyperplasia in cancer, be it lung cancer, uh, intestinal cancer, liver cancer, pancreatic cancer. I have cells that have lost their specialized function, dysplasia, and they're dividing rapidly, hyperplasia. So in some cases, you may hear the term neoplasm. Neoplasm is just another um, term for cancer or a tumor. So don't be surprised if you see a neoplasm. And now we know what neoplasms are, what, what cancer is. It's dysplasic cells that are undergoing hyperplasia. Um, not all cancers have to grow rapidly, however. Um, hyperplasia isn't necessarily a rapid growth. It's just an increase in the actual number of these cells. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here, and we'll talk about metaplasia 
um, quickly in a subsequent video. Take care.